Ohm's law says that the current flowing through a circuit is directly proportional to the voltage and inversely proportional to the resistance at a constant temperature. Good day, everyone. You're watching Makoga Enterprises. The real lesson is going to be Ohm's law. So this is going to give us an understanding and a guide. So we get to understand how the different parameters in a circuit and how they interact with each other as far as Ohm's law is concerned. This is to aid us or to give us, give us a guide while we are doing our design calculations. And when we are doing sizing of cables as well as protective device, we know the appropriate cable or the appropriate size of protective device that we are selecting for that particular circuit, it should conform to the requirement or it should conform to the particular load that we've assigned for that particular cable as well as the protective device. This is very important. This is very important. Ohm's law states that the current flowing through a circuit is directly proportional to the voltage and inversely proportional to the resistance at a constant temperature. Ohm's law clearly states that it should be at a constant temperature. So if we have all these different parameters functioning in a circuit, they should all be in a constant temperature. This gives us an understanding that if we have a temperature rise, it becomes an abnormal condition. So as such, we should have all this, uh, we, have, we will have a current either flowing rapidly in the circuit due to this temperature rise. So but if we have the, the temperature, which is less than the, 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 the selected protective device as well as a cable, it will have no impact in the circuit because it still becomes a normal condition, which is very important. We have three different parameters, the current, voltage, and resistance. We have a cable. So we define what is a cable, give the difference between a cable and um, a wire. So while we are doing as different selections, we know what we are doing. A cable is a length of insulated conductor. The conductor could either be solid or stranded, and it should be made up of two or more such conductors put together. So we have more than two conductors or more than two wires put together, it becomes a cable. So a single conductor is a wire. We move to a graphic. Very important graphic as far as the current voltage and resistance is concerned in the circuit. As you can see, before we move into this graphic, we'll define what is current voltage and resistance. Current is a free flow of electrons in a circuit. So we have, if we have electrons flowing freely, it gives a way for current as well to move freely. Why voltage is a pressure that pushes the electrons to move. Resistance is a total opposition to the free flow of electrons. So if you see, look at the graphic, you see that this is a cable or wire, and we have current which is forcing itself to move due to electrons that is flowing through the circuit. So we have an applied voltage. So this voltage now is pushing electrons to move where resistance is holding it back not to move, which is a total opposition to the free flow of electrons. So we have current forcing itself to move. Voltage now is pushing it, applying pressure so that we have free flow of electrons, which will pave a way for current as well to move. And then we have resistance holding it back not to move. So you notice that if we do our design calculations, we have um, our design current after taking into consideration different parameters, such as the deleting factors or diabetic factors, and then also taking into consideration some other safety factors or design factors. We do a selection of our cable or our wire. After doing that, we select as well an appropriate size of protective device, which will protect that circuit. It's very important. The reason why we are doing this selection of protective device, which will match based on the conductor size that we selected, is to ensure that we meet to the Ohm's law, which states that the current is directly proportional to the voltage, inversely proportional to resistance at a constant temperature. So if this con temperature increases, what happens? It becomes an abnormal condition. And during abnormality in a circuit, we should have our protective devices operate. 
it should trip that circuit so that we don't have the same amount of current keep flowing in the circuit, which will damage our equipment. This is very important. So while we do our calculation, we select the size of cable, which will match as per the design cable that we have, the design uh, current that we have, and then we select the appropriate size of protective device that will operate or trip the circuit during abnormal condition. So when we have temperature rise, it will lead to rapid flow of electrons, which will pave a way rapidly for current to move. And when current starts flowing rapidly in the circuit, it becomes abnormality in the circuit. Why do I say this? We have resistance and voltage, which is constant. Supposing we have a circuit, and probably the circuit is 240 volts that have been supplied to that circuit. And then we select our size of cable. And then the amount of current that will be flowing through that circuit will be based on the size, the, 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 the uh, design calculation that we've done, because the design calculation we've done will be based on the load. So the load will be the one drawing current from or drawing power from the source coming to the load. So while it's pulling power from the source coming to the load, we ensure that we do our calculation of the, we do our calculation and select an appropriate cable or wire so that we will have this current to be flowing freely from the source going to the load, which is very important. So abnormality in the circuit now start coming in if we have temperature rise, because if you go through uh, the different uh, cable manufacturers, you will see in a catalog, we have different uh, temperature range, uh, range, uh, ranges. We have either 70 degrees C, 90 degrees C. So all these different temperatures will take into consideration while selecting a size of cable, which is very important, or a size of wire. Supposing we take uh, uh, dual cables, they have the different temperature range. It could be either be 70 degrees C or 90 degrees C. Selection of maybe armor cables. We might be talking of 70 degrees C if I'm not making a mistake. So if we'll go through the different column of the 70 degrees C, selecting uh, armor cable, it could either be copper or aluminum. So we select the size of cable. We should also select a size of protective device that will protect that circuit during abnormal condition, which is very important because we have our load, which is constant, pulling current from the source going to the load. We have our cable, which is also selected, which is having a, a constant resistance based on the size of cable. We have a cable which have been applied to that circuit, which is pushing the electrons to move. So when we have our cable, our current, which is constant, we have our resistance constant as well. And then we have rapid flow of electrons, which pave a way for rapid current to move, moving from the source going to the load due to temperature rise, it will damage that cable as well as moving to the, 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 the appliance to damage it as well. So the reason why we are selecting an appropriate size of protective device is during an abnormal condition in the circuit, we should have a circuit protective devices strip to enable or to prevent current, that huge amount of current from flowing from the source going to the load. This is very important. So this topic is just to give us a highlight and also to understand what is Ohm's law and to know the different parameters, to know how the different parameters function in the circuit, so that when we do our design calculations, we select the appropriate size of cable as well as the, prote the protective device that will protect that circuit during abnormal condition and during normal condition. Because a circuit protective device or a circuit breaker, for example, I, I will put a circuit breaker in this case, is a device, is a protective device which is used for making and breaking a circuit during normal and abnormal condition. So you notice that a circuit, a circuit breaker is a protective device which is used for making and then breaking a circuit during normal and abnormal condition. During normal condition, it operates. And during abnormal condition, it breaks the circuit to prevent that huge amount of current to flow from the source going to the load. This is safety behind it. So we get to understand what is Ohm's law. We follow the rules and also to ensure that we do our calculation properly in doing cable selection size as well as protective device that will protect a particular circuit. It is very important. See then, you're watching Macogar Enterprises.